What's up, Sim Race? This is Larry TJR Sim, and today I thought it would be cool to finally do my review on the Alpha U. I've been using this for quite a while now, and uh, found it to be simply amazing, actually. So let's get into it, give you all the ins and outs. Let's do it. Alrighty, so jumping into this uh, Sim Magic Alpha U review here, just quickly give you a little bit slight background. I wanted to start reviewing uh, a bunch of direct drive wheelbases. Uh, of course, was coming from an AccuForce version two. It works great for me. It still works great. But I love the quick disconnect on that one, which is is the same as this NRG uh, type connector. Sim Magic and Moza, of course, use the same same type of connection. I love it. It's absolutely my favorite. It feels like you're jumping in, in a race car and snapping it in position. And uh, I like it, right? So you like what you like, but I wanted something that can interchange with that one as well. And then also not have to buy so many wheels that would be a waste of money later on. Uh, depending on who the winner is, that gets to stay on my rig for for, for however long uh, before I decide to buy a new one that was surpass the best of the best in say 2024, right? Uh, with that said, Sim Magic is is uh, amazing it's it's that simply amazing i did not think that this was going to be as good as it is uh because when you put it on paper the sim magic puts out uh let's see 262 000 uh go to resolution right bits of resolution and that's great because the accuforce put out fifty thousand something right so huge upgrade on paper it would blow blow it away uh, the Logitech DD that I've uh, reviewed on the channel, I don't know how much resolution. They don't advertise what it puts out. And they also don't, neither neither one of those two, or even or three of these, doesn't advertise the slew rate either. So I don't know how quick it reacts to that. Whereas they say Simicube and Asetech being a, probably the premium line, uh, advertises the slew rate, which is how quick it can, it can respond, right? On paper, like I said, Asetech would uh, blow it away. Asetech is basically just, uh, if, if you're new to this, is a semi-cube uh, with, with uh, higher-end electronics, uh, some LED strips on it, uh, a little bit more robust, uh, quick-change system to where you have this this own uh, your own little uh, adapter that you can plug any of your wheels into it and then use any wheel on their device uh, without having a lot of rigmarole of, of things. So pretty cool uh, system. So I may end up with Asetech this was my thought. I would end up with Asetech as the final production, keep it. But I'm not so sure <laughs> I will ever need the Asetech after reviewing this Sim Magic for the length of time that I've been doing it, which is over over a month of heavy use, seven days a week, I testing this on all the games and uh, that I enjoy, uh, which is AMS, ACC, some a set of course i don't play a set of course too much anymore because acc exists and i think it's better in that in the, in the regard about how i like to play which is gt3 games and then uh, ams2 love it absolutely this wheel it really shines on ams2 i don't do i used to do i racing a lot uh, if i ever get into where i want to race local uh, race online then i'll i'll jump back on that again as far as competition wise and forza games i love playing the forza games too SimK type games. ESEAA is awesome on this. The software that we have in this uh, device here is uh, pretty damn cool. Uh, really brings out some of the details that I've never felt on other wheels, actually. So, with that said, I'm going to roll some B roll and talk through it as well with uh, all the findings I've had here with this wheelbase. All right, let's jump into it further, actually. So in this uh, rest of this video, I have this broke down into several categories. We'll cover build, software, force feedback, areas of improvement, and then finally the conclusions. So going over build first here, uh, with all the necessary hardware uh, coming in the package, it, it makes it a joy to hook this up here. They come with the T-slots, the bolting you need. Um, the brackets are extra. I did uh, obtain the brackets uh, separately just so I can adjust the angles on it on the rig without adjusting my uh, SimLab rig. Also like that those particular brackets, if you do spend extra money for them, as they're individually drilled, so it doesn't ever lose its placement over time, uh, especially with a high torque wheel like this. You would easily, if that was just one slot there on the sides, 
it would easily lose adjustment over time. So individual slot adjustments is awesome. Very high quality uh, brackets there. Then of course you get all the cables you need, the USB cables, the cable that goes to the e-stop button. When you do get the ultimate, you do actually get an e-stop button. So you don't have to buy it separately. It is in the box, which is a nice additive I would add uh, to the setup here. The reason is, is that sometimes you may find that, well, the wheel gets away from you from using high torque. Uh, so you can easily click that uh, button there to turn off the torque to the wheel. But also I've found in some games, particularly like your Forza games, uh, when you quit a game early, the code is still sending to the to the uh, wheel box itself, which then allows you to, you know, it puts tension on the wheel itself and you may not like that, right? You have to wait until you could continue the game again. Instead of waiting, you can just hit your e-stop button, which is a quick little disconnect. Uh, the wheel will go light. And then uh, when you get ready to load your game back up, uh, it'll uh, you know work as normal. So that's a really nice feature I found actually to use it. So overall dimensions are uh, pretty slim. This is not a very big unit. It's uh, 12.83 inches long uh, by 4.33 by 4.33, which for my European friends, it's 326 by 110 by 110 millimeters. And uh, it's, it's pretty heavy, a unit here at 23 pounds or 10 and a half kgs. Uh, so it's very solid, which actually adds to the nice, uh, the substantial build. It's just a huge, you know, metal slug, it seems like, uh, with this big motor in here, putting out 23 newton meters. Now, paired with this, I went ahead and got the Simmagic GT Neo. Uh, it's undeniably a, one of the best looking wheels that uh, Simmagic has put in their lineup. It's got really nice looking aesthetics. Really high quality functionality, and of course, including all the LEDs and in-game telemetry that you would have, uh, which is very appreciated on here. And it works seamlessly, which we'll get into when we start discussing the software, uh, which I can really appreciate. Overall, a 10 out of 10 with impeccable build quality, which truly is reflective of the commitment to excellence. Alrighty, so we're getting to the software section of the review. This is, uh, of course, Sim Pro Manager, as you see here. This is the software that you would download if you are purchasing, of course, any of the Sim Magic gear. You could pre-download this software just to see what's going on here, just to get familiar with it, to see what types of games this software already supports. Maybe telemetry, maybe you're interested in, in ordering uh, a dash, uh, the, the wheel, the FX Pro, which has the built-in dash. You could see what telemetry would show up on that before you spent your $800 on it, right? So this would be a good idea to download it if you're interested in getting into this ecosystem. But let's dive in further. So diving deeper here on the software, you will see uh, with the wheelbase on, all the items, of course, that are lit up over the wall ago. When you go into devices, it'll actually register everything that's plugged in, which in this case is the Q1 shifter, as well as the handbrake. But on the home page, you'll notice it only shows one on there. Uh, when you first turn this on, it actually does flash both, but I think they just only have pre-slots for five of them on here. So any other shifters, obviously they produce two of them now that you could have plugged in at the same time. Uh, it's going to show them both in devices. All right, so uh, talking about some basic settings for the wheelbase itself here, I will do a separate video on how to optimize these and explain deeper on these. So if you're interested in learning more about these, please comment below and I'll be glad to do a video on that to help you. But it helps me gauge who's actually interested in this this type of information as well to get more force feedback out of your, more feel out of your wheelbase. So this is a pretty powerful wheelbase, 23 newton meters. If you have the alpha, it'd say 15 or the mini would say 10, but these are your settings. So your force feedback settings. So how much of this 23 newton meters that you want to receive your sm smoothness. This is basically uh, smoothing out some signals of force feedback that are, are uh, basically noise. Are, are spikes in the force feedback, things that you don't want to they feel electronic to you when you're turning your wheel uh, left to right. Uh, you, 
this will smooth those frequencies out. So generally I like to keep it down on, on one to feel the most, but some SIMs, CC, it, it's too many of these little high pitched, dirty frequencies coming through. So I'll, I'll up this up a little bit more. Um, and then you got your rotational speed here. You got, a, I set it to 100. This is just how fast your wheel turns side to side or how fast it possibly could based on the feedback. Your feedback detail, this is how many details, surface details you feel through the wheel. And then you got your mechanical damper. This is just the dampening of those uh, feedbacks. Remember in these three here, mechanical damping, friction, and inertia all literally dampen the feedback that you would get through the wheel. But uh, damper sometimes is, is good to use. Uh, Mechanical friction. This one I generally use about 10% on most of my sims. This acts as a little bit of uh, rotational friction you get, like you would have through your steering column, uh, just to represent that, kind of be more real to life. And then inertia. I don't generally ever use inertia, and this is just amplifying what's happening on your wheel. So if you're turning your wheel to the right fast, it's going to keep that momentum and keep that inertia going a little bit longer. Your feedback frequency here, this is a really cool slider here, not seen on some of the other wheelbases that I've uh, reviewed here recently, but in the past. But this feedback frequency is, is uh, nice to amplify the signals that you're getting through the wheelbase. It actually works very similar to the smoothness because it not only amplifies them, but it also smooths them out as well. So for instance, EAWRC is a great example. I'll run some feedback frequency on that particular game because it'll pull in the details of the pebbles on the track and actually uh, make it where I feel them through the wheel, uh, where before that I never felt them in the wheel, even though I had the feedback detail up max because they were just, I guess, such a non-perfect frequency coming through that I didn't really feel it too much. So it wasn't a good quality signal, so I didn't feel it as much. So I was able to boost that signal and then smooth it out with this frequency. So this is a very, very good additive here. And then you have, of course, <clears throat> your presets, excuse me, ACC TJR is the one I have set right here. You can have cloud syncing, so you can sync them to the cloud. You have your local presets here. These are just ones you create yourself. Uh, when you first get this project, all you'll see is this SimMagic fine-tuned preset. So this will be all the games that are implemented through this uh, hardware right now. And of course, you can just click on it, say uh, AMS2 right here. This gives you a, a notice basically saying, since I moved a slider around, it wants me to do I want to hit back and then save it or just discard. So I just discard because I already have my preset saved. But it's just a nice little tattletale that tells you so you don't lose your settings. So that's a very nice thing for the software. But here, for example, AMS2 is some defaults. This gets you close uh, to what you would like to feel. I, these are professionally tuned is what they say on the uh, YouTube videos that they make. <clears throat> Uh, not they probably are. Uh, rotational speed is a little bit too slow for me, but I think they being professionally tuned is to get the most out of your wheelbase for the average consumer and uh, keep them safe, right? So you don't have a turning at a, a max speed, something a little bit slower so you don't uh, hurt yourself, especially trying to get used to something like 23 Newton meters of force. So that's nice to see that they actually do that as well. Gives you a little bit of a, a basic uh, start with, but feel free to just change all these the way you want to. And then uh, you made a mistake, like it was stock, you can just hit revert, say confirm, and it'll go back to stock. And then let's say you did like all the way up because you're testing it on track, and just hit save as, uh, as, and then you can put in your preset name and you can put the categories that it's going to. So this one obviously would only go to MS2, so you click that one but that would then hold uh, these settings that you have for AMS2. So now when you come over to game section uh, and you click on AMS2 here, uh, you have a base preset to launch every time you hit play. You can hit, of course, play right here through the Sim Pro Manager, which is nice. And if you click this auto switch preset on, default is off, click, click, click it on, it'll load all these settings you have even your wheel preset settings. So I have a certain type of lighting I like to use across um, games. And so this is the one I use. Um, going backwards here, again, we'll back up a little bit. When I come over to GT Neo, 
uh, talking about the software here, you have uh, all these lights that you, of course, you can set up, change all the colors. You can click on each one, change all the colors. I'm sure you all have seen this already on some other videos, but you do have some uh, telemetry that comes in off ABS, TC, hit, DRS, and flag. These are pretty much your only feedback signals, but you can click on whichever button you want to actually flash when the telemetry is coming through the game. So that's really cool to see. You know, set, I set these bottom sections here to all flash at me. So when it's going green and they're yelling, these are all flashing green on me. Uh, yellow flags the same way. Uh, so pretty cool white flags, so flash white. Really nice pit, you know, just a visual cue that you see at, in your face to let you know what's going on. So that is a very nice additive. Uh, you also have your dimming right here, which dims the light on your wheel itself. You can go to light settings. If I click this button, this is synced with the global dimming, which is this one here, or you can have it off and just change the dimming here that you want uh, for the buttons. I always sync it. And then uh, going in here, you have all the colors that you can change. You can click on them individually, or you can highlight all of them if you want to and change them all to a certain color you want. Um, that one, right? So pretty powerful stuff. You can disable the flash if that annoys you. Uh, you can disable the flash. You can start it at different sequences when you want it to flash. Uh, it's all pretty cool. And then these increments here, you can actually change the increments of uh, when it actually flashes. So if you only want it to flash when you hit 100%, change it to 100% and so on. So very powerful software, M much more improved from what I've seen reviews on in the very beginning when they came out. So uh, I really like their software. And then of course, any, uh, any product that you have plugged in is registered. So for instance, here's my H pattern shifter. This is automatically registers. I didn't even have to calibrate this one. It was already pre-calibrated out of the box. Same thing with my sequential shifter. It was pre-calibrated as well. And then uh, the nice additive it has here is that the uh, actually recognizes in game automatically. If you click it on manual, right? Or manual with clutch, you can actually just row through the gears. Uh, here you click this button here sync with the paddle so when i click my paddle shifters on my neo it's flashing negative this is downshift and then back to back to neutral right um or registering so now my display on my q1 is registering what is in game as opposed to when you plug this in usb only instead of through the cam bus uh yours may not match uh we have here so if you driving a five speed car for instance and, and you click one more on this uh, lever and you go to six it'll register six here but in game you're still on fifth so then when you start banging down gears they don't match so a little bit of ocd correction if you get the cam bus if you plug it in through the cam bus uh, with the wheel itself so that i would i would recommend you get the simagic cam bus adapter which will allow you to plug all their peripherals into one device which then allows you to come over to the game when you're in the game itself. This is more prevalent in games like uh, Simcade games like Forza and, and EA games to where you have one device, it's recognizing it as one device and you can map everything uh, as far as your uh, wheel, your wheel buttons, and then of course your shifter buttons and your handbrake as well, all in one device. So it's very handy instead of having it individually map them separately as if you would with a USB connection. So pretty dang cool. All right. Also with games, let me cover this part as well. I was happy to see they have the IDP forwarding. So telemetry right here. So for this particular one is as F124. I was click on, but let's see, I can go here to ACC. Let me see. MS, MS, telemetry. Not all of them need it, uh, but F1, F124 does need it. So this one here, you have UDP 40. So this will basically allow you to use two external devices. So for my case, I have motion rig. So this is really helpful on these SIMK games. Forza is, uh, is very popular for that. Let me see where's my one I play is Forza Motorsports. Right here, Forza Motorsports. So I like to use my D-Box on it. Uh, I have my UDP listen for my settings for my D-Box and then uh, or for this wheel itself and then it forwards it over to the D-Box so now I have motion with all the telemetry that's coming through you know the fancy wheel or so if you have the wheel with a dash kit it would all work seamlessly right so this is a very nice feature I'm glad that they added that 
as well. So uh, UDP 40. So if you wanted to use, say, SIM hubs, it'd be the same thing. You would want to forward that to the SIM hub so it can pull the telemetry in uh, if you want to mess with that as far as your lights go. I think they have motion factor added to that recently as well. I haven't played around with SIM hub much. I find that this software here is just fine for me. I don't really care to change the lights to all these different colors and do different things. I think where SIM hub would come in handy is when you have the pedals and you want to change the uh, haptic motors that you can attach, attach to here to something different that would be handy. Same thing with the uh, haptic motor where you go to feedback here. If you want to change more than these parameters here for your handbrake, you have a little bit more settings like engine vibration and so on. You have to check out SIM hub to check it out. But for me, the basics as far as what I would use this handbrake for, which is the frequency to fill when I have the real rear wheel lockup, uh, th this works just fine. So I actually like to run minimal amount of separate softwares as possible to keep the <laughs> all my PS going strong within the game. So. Okay, so I covered the IDP forwarding, the default SIM settings of, of as well. When you come to the games here individually, you have a game guide, so it will list some uh, some settings for you to use in the game. So that's a nice little additive as well to get the most out of your wheelbase. Uh, it doesn't really say whether this is would work best for the U version, the Alpha, or the Mini, but you know. You can adjust all you want. I actually have a, a separate video out on Forza Motorsports if you're interested in and that as far as force feedback that actually feels a lot better. And uh, this Symmetra Alpha U actually makes Forza feel way better than it did with the Logitech and or my, uh, my um, first wheel. So pretty good. All right. So for the rest of the uh, Sim Manager, Okay, moving on, you also have on Sim Manager, you can go straight to the Discord. You can, of course, go to the website as well to download all your drivers that you need uh, initially or to check out their YouTube videos that explain how to update your, your Alpha U or your Neo or any other product lines, right? So really good. Uh, one thing to cover real quickly here under devices is there is a firmware list up here, firmware update, and also list channels. This channel is very important to use. This default is 80 when you just uh, plug it in. Uh, what I found was anything over 100 works works for as having a stronger signal between my wheelbase and my GT Neo itself. What happens is that when it was at default, I would lose signal sometimes. And uh, so if you know that is in game, I would still have all these lights, but they would be different colors than what I selected. <laughs> So I would simply just quick disconnect the wheel, uh, in game actually, uh, and then re reconnect the wheel uh, just by physically removing the wheel from the wheelbase and then re re -plug it in. Uh, and then it would correct it and pull in all the right data. But sometimes that signal would get lost. What fixed it uh, for the 95% of the time would be changing this channel up to past 100. I ended up going with 124 to where I didn't have any more problems. I still get some signal drop every once in a while with that. I also get some signal drop with say my handbrake. Sometimes my handbrake doesn't get recognized when I first plug it in. Or, I'm sorry, it's always plugged in, but when I first boot up the base, sometimes it doesn't. So I'll just physically unplug the handbrake uh, and then plug it back in and then it'll get recognized. So it's just a little bit of quirks I've seen with their software, but I am talking about the software. So this is a good time to mention it. All right, that's it for the software portion. Let's move on to the next. So with force feedback, we have lots of gameplay here, uh, but I'll just uh, chunk up a few of them on here. This one here, of course, is WRC, the EA version here, and force feedback is amazing in this game, actually, uh, with uh, what you get especially for such a fast paced game and, and something that really chunks you around on the rig as well uh, with the motion. But the details, like I was mentioning earlier on, uh, when I was using that filter, that frequency filter to bump it up, I'm able to feel the granule effects of the gravel uh, coming through the wheel. And this is actually using a big 330 millimeter wheel as well, although it's very light. 
no electronics on it. It's just one of them I had from uh, from uh, the AccuForce, actually. This is a standard AccuForce wheel. And, uh, but yeah, it, it works really good for, for rally racing. I'll probably get the Sim Magic uh, version here later on, but for now, this is good. I uh, experienced in, you know, what I was lacking was there were some frequency issues uh, in this game that it was coming through. And I was trying to smooth them out with the smoothing function. There were some dirty signals, basically, I was feeling. And I got those, you know, resolved with the smoothing. And then I was like, hmm, let's try out this uh, frequency filter as well. And uh, I started adjusting it up a little bit. And lo and behold, here comes all this gravel fill that I'm feeling that I actually feel through my D-Box. But now I'm feeling it through the rim itself. So I was very impressed with the force feedback um, the, the detail that you were getting in the force feedback and the fact that I could actually amplify something that wasn't so apparent uh, initially in the game, right? So uh, pretty damn cool, if you ask me. So as you can tell, you know, I'm impressed with the force feedback here in this particular game, but it's not just this game. It's all the games that I've uh, experienced some really good force feedback, uh, like ACC, AMS2, this, of course, WRC, uh, Forza Motorsports actually really came alive with this, uh, even more so than it did uh, with the Logitech wheel. Actually, with the uh, AccuForce, it was stronger force feedback because it was you know higher newtons. Uh, and the cleanliness between the Logitech and the AccuForce is uh, fairly close to each other. Uh, so you know, Logitech came out with something that was pretty dang good, uh, but not to the standards of something like Sim Magic, of course. But Different, different uh, spectrum of, of uses, right? But with this one, I was able to amplify what I needed to uh, to get something I like. And that's the main purpose of this all, all this force feedback features, is to be able to make it the way you individually like it, not the way some professional likes it or some other YouTuber likes it, but how do you like it? Uh, so with the sliders, I am able to accomplish that. So, so here with Sims like ACC AMS2, it's very, very apparent, you know, it's, it's not such a busy game as, say, a WRC game. So you can take your time and really soak in the effects of the road textures uh, coming in as, instead of having to just hold on for dear life and don't go, uh, you know, driving off of a cliff like in WRC. Here you're able to, to uh, focus on your lines and uh, soak up the road textures that you would get, uh, you know, on the track in say real life, right? Or at least as close as you can. These are simulations after all. So they should be, you know, they are actually scanned tracks. So where the bumps are, you fill them through the wheel. Uh, but what you can't really see is you can't see the individual textures that I will feel through the wheel. You'll see the big bumps and stuff uh, through the rim itself as the movement goes. Here you see the lights go green as the flags uh, kicking on, which is a really cool feature with the GT Neo. Uh, you know, for especially for the cost of this Neo rim itself. But uh, you through this rim, I'm able to feel the the minute textures. Of course, I get to feel the you know the curbs and off-track features. That's no big deal. Any any uh, <clears throat> any force feedback wheel, any direct drive wheel will cover these just fine. It's the edge of grip uh, that you feel to where you can drive more closely to the edge, uh, and also the pneumatic feel that you get of your tires, you know, bouncing off the road surface. And uh, it leaves no question of why your car is moving around in certain situations, uh, especially see even like in that curve here on Laguna Seca, uh, you're able to feel the dips, uh, the loading and unloading of the tires where they go light right here, and then they load up really hard right here. You're able to feel that where some of the other rims uh, or wheelbases, uh, say even like the Logitech, it feels decent through there, but it's not as detailed it, it almost starts to go numb because you, you 
basically are clipping at that point. Where this uh, wheel, you're able to feel the loading and unloading. Plus, if you're going fast enough and starting to slide the tires through there, you're able to pick that up as well. A lot of this has contributed to having a higher horsepower wheelbase, more power than you really need in a lot of cases, to where it allows you to set your clipping of in the game uh, low enough. And then check out my video if you don't understand what clipping is. I already have it posted up. How to tell if you need to go to a more powerful wheelbase. It's in that video. But you're able to turn down your your uh, your in-game force, uh, maybe even 15% less uh, before you would even clip. You have such so much headroom in the 23 newton meters is that you're able to then turn up the force of, of the uh, wheelbase itself to amplify those loading and unloading of tires just beautifully uh, and also pull in any of the details that you need when you are sliding your tires around on the track. So it's it's a lot more immersive uh, when you have more power than you need if you utilize it correctly, uh, in my opinion. Uh, now, if you're running a lower force feedback wheel, say a mini 10, 10 newton meters, you're not gonna have that headroom. Right? Not saying that that's a bad, bad thing. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe it's not really a big deal to you. Uh, you can still have just as much fun, but as you go up higher in the Newton meters, you have a little bit more leeway to play on some of these sims, especially sims that don't put out a lot of force feet. Uh, say like uh, Gran Turismo or something like that, for instance, right? Uh, obviously, this one isn't hooked up for, <laughs> for uh, PlayStation compatibility, but you can actually buy a a uh, device to allow it to be PlayStation. So I digress. Uh, more power, the better. Okay, Larry, let's get this right. No fuck ups. Green, let's go, let's go. So summarizing the force feedback uh, in this review here is it's. It's the most detailed force feedback I have felt in a direct drive wheel as of to date, which is really nice. Uh, I didn't think that I was going to be as impressed with the force feedback on this wheelbase as I was, but it is uh, remarkably well uh, done. And uh, the, the ability to make your setting changes uh, is just icing on the cake. So between the force feedback, the software to make it work well, in my opinion, is, is key uh, is is uh, it is a lot of fun and it's hard to put down all right let's go on to the next alrighty so this covers some areas of improvement <clears throat> just like any anything out there there's always room for improvement and hopefully I'm sure there's feedback from youtubers even smaller channels like myself may be appreciated uh, they do actually have a discord uh, channel as well that you can go to and leave all your comments they seem pretty active there i've used it for warranties on my q1 as well so check them out now for for what i would see is some improvements is i would like to see some enhanced folder arrangement here so when you go to the presets edit it folder here ams2 you have the sim magic fine tune presets and when you click on that, it had list all the games uh, for it and you can switch through that just fine. Uh, but it's not quite apparent to where is my settings at now. So if I go back and click on that, now I see my settings here, uh, my cloud-based ones that I saved, and then also the local presets. So it would be nice if there's a little bit more organization in the folders. Maybe the first thing you see when you pull this up is some magic fine tune presets like this and then user preset folder, just some little organization that allows you to figure it out in the beginning. Once you've gotten used to this software, it's not such a big deal, but it is handy for newcomers. Also a transparent update on firmware. So I have firmware 193. So I'd like to see some transparency here. Do I have the latest firmware? So when you do release a new firmware update, do I have the latest one? Uh, something here to indicate that I'm on the latest, or maybe it says the latest firmware date is, 
and then my firmware date is, and that way I know if I need to go back and update, or if I'm happy with my firmware, I just leave it alone, right? But some kind of indication right here that keeps me from having to leave my manager, because this is a, a, the manager of your software, to go to the website to download anything. Now, it does actually update your base automatically uh, once you get it going, but the reason I say this is the very first, when, you know, when I first started this up, I already had the software, uh, downloaded on the PC because I was looking at the telemetry and getting used to this uh, software, right? See what it offers. Uh, when I plugged in my base, it uh, didn't recognize the base. So I was like, hmm, what's going on? Uh, doing some Reddit, how do I update? And I was like, I immediately thought, well, maybe I need to update the firmware base, right? And because uh, this is kind of what I was used to. Uh, couldn't find anything uh, besides how to actually update the firmware base. Uh, when I was going to do that, nothing really happened here in the software. So I was confused. Well, Lo and behold, what happens is having this software already pre-installed before I initially plugged in the base created some kind of conflict. So I simply just uninstalled this software and then re-downloaded it, Simpro 2 Manager, and then it recognized the base automatically and then started doing its update. So a little bit of clarity in the beginning would be nice to say that, you know, something about in those regards. Maybe even in the instructions, I was looking through the instructions that I got, it didn't say, to download the software. Don't download the software first before plugging in the base. Maybe this isn't an option. Maybe I'm an anomaly <laughs> on this, but that is what I experienced as well. And I don't really want to dig through thousands of channels of, of Discord to figure out stuff. I want to come to the manager and the manager tells me everything I need to know because I don't have time to be digging and YouTube searching, right? So you want to make it as transparent and quick as possible to get up and running. So that's just a little a little extra that would be uh, go a long way. For enhance, uh, enhancing this also, we don't have, so we have the fine tune settings, just to expand on that one more time. Uh, we have what we preset, but there's nothing to download from other users. So maybe other uh, favorite YouTube channels that have some software set up. So Semicube is a good example that has where you can use user-based software. Uh, and then also AccuForce used to do that in the beginning before they switched that channel off. And to be honest, a lot of times it's, there's a lot of trash out there as far as what user profiles are there. But if you, sell, if you have a pre-select settings for user software to say that certain criteria are filled in, all of these criteria are all filled in, at least moved or modified or something. And then there's a description that tells you what this uh, person was going for. Maybe it's a drifting package or maybe it's a GT3, GTE, something like that that makes it a preset that would let the person that's downloading the software or the uh, settings to know ahead of time. So some more enhancement in that area would be really cool, I think, and really set this off as far as becoming more of a user-based software amongst all the other users out there. Because you, you, when you're chatting with somebody, you can say, hey, just download this one. I have it uploaded. Go from there. Right now, what you have to do is just save it out and then email it to them, and then they can load it in themselves, which is really cool to do as well. But a little bit further in that, uh, enhancement in the year of 2024, that would be really cool. Uh, of course, I guess they would have to have a server database for people to maintain. So I could understand some of the cost effective for that. But again, another improvement. Also, an enhanced boosted wire connection. So I got to explain, explain in the software section of this, when you go to channels, you can change the channel to have, an, to have a more clear signal between you and your wheelbase itself or your wheel rim itself. Uh, it did take quite a bit of experimenting and driving and, and playing around as far as playing in the sims and then noticing when my signal dropped. Uh, it's not like the wheel didn't work or the buttons didn't work. It's what I found is like the LEDs would go off on the, on the wheelbase as far as changing the colors automatically. And I'm in a race. I'm not going to stop and change anything. But what I found to fix it, it like I discussed in the software, is, is just disconnecting the wheel and plugging it back in. And then it would reload it automatically and just keep going. So just a simple pause of the game and then uh, do that little uh, little run around and then, uh, then you're good to go again. But maybe we need to enhance the signal that's in the wheelbase itself to the, to the rims themselves or vice versa. But some enhancement on the boosted signal would be greatly appreciated in newer versions, I think. Especially since this is actually a new wheel that just came out just uh, a couple months ago. 
So this should have the latest software. But that is one, one downside that I noticed. Lastly, the mobile app integration. I have noticed people talk about that mobile app integration. I'm not real big on it myself. Uh, so I really wouldn't care if you had a mobile app integration, but I do find it nice for my LEDs to control in my, in my SIM room here through an app. Uh, but as long as we have this in here, this is plenty fine. So I would say that's an optional, not a areas of improvement, but uh, some people might might think that would be a proper area of improvement is to have an app where you can adjust all your settings for your lighting and stuff per per game. And then it just automatically uploads when you turn on your PC or you save it to the cloud and you pull it down from the cloud, uh, something you can do on the go. So. A lot of multitaskers out there would probably appreciate that. So that covers uh, all the all the uh, areas of improvement. Not much to cover, to be honest. Really solid system. Alrighty, so on with my final thoughts or conclusion of the SimMagic Alpha U wheelbase here, and uh, slightly covering the GT Neo along the way. But it really is a nice industrial look. It's got a beautiful. It has many beautiful wheel choices, such as the GT Neo that I have in this video. Uh, you got the FX Pro, and then of course it has Rally covered as well, and regular GT type racing. There's a very expansive ecosystem in the Sim Magic. Their software is very fleshed out now, uh, very up to date, and uh, really is kind of the heart of this wheelbase. So you have the horsepower with the the horsepower and the clarity in the force feedback of the wheelbase itself, but adding the software that will amplify it where you want it and detune it where you where you don't, to me, is key. Uh, so it seems that really no matter how weak the particular sim is or kind of how strong it is, I'm able to tune it uh, to my liking uh, with the with the settings that are the software itself right now. So. With that said, at the end of the day, this is really what it's all about. You want to get a your sim, your favorite sim, to feel more realistic than it ever did before. Uh, you want to, you know, feel tuned in, tapped in, turned on to jump into your sim, <laughs> start playing, not have to mess with settings over and over and over. Uh, just get out there and play and have fun uh, and, and have something that feels realistic in your hand. So. I think the Alpha U actually does a really good job at this. I would actually recommend this wheelbase to those that are looking for something uh, more on the high power end as well. So, yeah, uh, with that, I think this delivers, you know, plenty of power, more power than most people probably need, but not more than you actually deserve. So, um, you'll have plenty of power on spare, I think, in most of these games. Uh, but some games in particular, you will need to bump up the power. But again, you have the headroom there to do. It. So yeah, uh, great sim base or you know, great sim wheelbase here, uh, simulation wheelbase that is. Uh, great choices on wheels and uh, other peripherals as well. So stay tuned for more. If you have any comments, uh, you know, list them below so others can learn from you. What's your experience with your your sim magic wheelbase whether it's the mini the alpha or the alpha u i'd love to hear from you uh and then yeah just leave some uh comments for we all can learn uh maybe you have some particular settings you like that you'd like to share go right ahead so all righty with that said i'll see you on the track i'm out